if I were to speculate out of my ass, totally in the least educated way possible, but my educated guess on the nonviolent crime rate uh, dropping alongside the violent crime rate dropping, if lead is not the only factor of consideration, in spite of the fact that extreme poverty across the board has not been eviscerated in the way that like, uh, you know, uh, uh, capitalist countries uh, love to claim they did with the exception of China. What I would say, what I would speculate is that technological advancements create the semblance of, of like not an actual eradication of poverty, but technological advancements growing and, and exponential growth has created a system in which uh, you feel as though there is a little bit more that you can do with less. It's the idea that you think you are more free because you can fucking purchase a cheap television or you have a phone in your hand. And technically, you are a more productive laborer in that regard. So, uh, in, in a way, technological achievements improve your conditions, improve uh, even life expectancy, for example, even if you don't fucking have full-blown access to all the amenities of, of every single bit of technological achievement. It basically improves your life uh, living conditions. Uh, even if you are not a, a direct beneficiary of said technological improvements. So that's what I think. That is what my suspicion is, rather. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense to you. I mean, a poor person being able to, 20 years ago, a poor person could not afford a mobile phone. Mobile phones didn't even fucking exist. Now, 20 years later, a poor person can afford an iPhone, has significantly more amenities, significantly more access, in spite of the fact that their living conditions, in comparison to other people's living conditions, are still fucking awful. You've made marginal improvements. This is what Steven Pinker talks about all the time. The, the difference is they fucking point to, or well, 20 years ago, it was 2003. It was like mobile phones were coming out at that point. So it wasn't like, I would, uh, dude, I'm so old. I said mobile phones didn't exist 20 years ago. I apologize. Mobile phones existed 20 years ago, obviously, because it was only 2003 and I'm 30 years old and not 20 years old anymore. I'm a fucking idiot. Make just, yes, I said the wrong thing. My point is, you didn't have fucking smartphones that were readily available, okay? Smartphones were not immediately and readily available 20 years ago to every single person in the same way that they are. Now, okay? Obviously, mobile phones existed, but not like smartphones with some level of internet uh, plan. Okay? It was a major luxury, I would say. So, that, <coughs> although your overall... Although your overall uh, opportunities for growth, opportunities for prosperity have diminished over the course of the past 20 years, the amenities that you get uh, living in a society where technological advancements are happening around you are tremendous. So you experience some of those benefits and you see like you, you think you have marginal improvements in your life when overall you're just simply making more work with less. You get it? Here, I mean, we've looked at this data before as well. Change in price for U.S. consumer goods and services in 2008. Here.
the cumulative price change since the financial crisis. By the way, this is uh, even worse when you consider when you compare it to like. even before 2008 hospital services uh in the cumulative price change since the financial crisis in 2008 for hospital services is 99.8%, whereas TVs have remained as cheap as possible and have only consistently gotten cheaper and cheaper. Smartphones have gotten cheaper and cheaper. Software has gotten cheaper. Some of those amenities are truly life-changing. Software, um, I would say that uh, software and mobile phone services are life-changing amenities. They're not simple distractions. TV is a simple distraction. It's a simper, simple, uh, it's just like a cheap. Toys are treats. TV would be in the treat category, but... Uh, mobile phone services and software would not be considered in that, in my opinion. Aren't the new iPhones like $1,200 new? How are they cheaper? Oh my God, I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Okay. Yes, the newest iPhones are very expensive. Every time we have a conversation about fucking iPhones or mobile phones, everybody goes, aren't newer iPhones like $1,200? Yes, but in comparison to a fucking iPhone that you can get that is an older generation that's infinitely more accessible now, 20 fucking years ago, no such technology even existed. Please understand that that is what I'm talking about. You don't need the marginally better product. Like, I could be buying a new iPhone every fucking year and I don't do that. Why? Because you don't need to do that, okay? Then the second part of this conversation always revolves around Androids are cheaper. It's the fucking true, uh, it's the it's the true uh, mobile phone of the proletariat. Meanwhile, the fucking most expensive Samsung phones are literally price adjusted to the most expensive iPhones. Technological improvements make people feel as though their lives are better. And in some ways, they do truly make your lives uh, uh, better, right? That's it. I think that that is the reason why, in spite of, uh, in spite of like, I think that is what kind of improves people's uh, existence, like material realities, while. Uh, their their overall big budget needs for survival, needs for uh, inelastic demand, need for upward social mobility. The single most important factor for upward social mobility needs for survival, needs for survival, needs for survival, needs for survival in the form of shelter are all still infinitely get, uh, more expensive and getting more and more expensive by the fucking year. Okay. CPI is a consumer price index. I'm taking a screenshot of this so I can pull it up next time someone tries to make that stupid fucking argument. No, I just ate, bro. Uh, only 10% of your hospital goes towards paying doctors, by the way. The rest goes towards CEOs, admin, and insurance companies that literally don't contribute at all to the patient's health care and only serve as middlemen and raise prices. Yes.
Anyway, the entire video shows that globalization has pushed the price of consumer goods down, especially those which are truly global industries. Even car prices have stayed more or less stable. Also, electronics are cheaper only because of the existence of the electronic industry in Asia. The phone would be ma way more expensive if it was manufactured in the U.S. and Europe. I mean, that's true, too. But what you're describing is uh, exploitation of the global south, exploitation of the third world in general, um, exploitation of the third world labor in general that has led to cheap uh, consumer goods that are easily affordable um, commodities such as TVs. But the thing is, you can live without a fucking television. I wouldn't say you can live without mobile phone services. In this day and age, it's absolutely essential that everyone has a fucking phone. However, you literally will die without hospital services or medical care. <laughs> you will literally die without food and drink. You will literally die without housing. And everything that you need, everything that is either like, uh, everything that either has inelastic demand or close to inelastic demand has consistently gone up. So my point is, as much as, of, as, much as I am a uh, hedonist who advocates for uh, cheap consumer goods to a certain degree and, and believes that like, that kind of thing has a, sed uh, a sedative effect on the uh, overall attitudes that people have, it, it definitely curbs revolutionary potential. Um or at least makes you more docile and easier to uh, lead, which, if a government is doing uh, a good job, is not a bad thing necessarily. When a government is doing a bad job and there is capitalism, it's, it's weaponized in, uh, in a very insidious and fucked up way. It pushes you away from recognizing the contradictions. Anyway. How do we get here? We were talking about crime. We're talking about lead poisoning and potential contributions to crime. And what I personally believe is that there is a, there is a, there's an improvement in the material conditions of, of all laborers across the world. Like it's almost like a trickle down effect, not real trickle down though. It's simply that technology is expansive. It's constantly growing. It's constantly getting better. And that uh, technological development makes you basically uh, feel as though you have uh, better material conditions. 